So print sizes and ratios, I gave you about a sheet several months ago, okay, regards print sizes and ratios that you have available. Okay, now whenever you bring a photograph out of your camera, it will have a certain size, a certain ratio. Most Canon cameras are a 3 2 ratio. Okay, so that means we can go get images printed at 6 by 4, 9 by 6, 12 by 8, or 18 12, and not lose any part of the image. But if we change from a 12 8 to a 10 by 8, we have to cut off 2 inches or part of the image to change the ratio. Therefore, we're losing part of the image information, and that could be crucial depending on the message that you're trying to get across, and it changes your composition. So I have a bunch of images with me today. I'm just going to open up a few, and we'll talk through different print sizes and ratios. And before I say anything as well, the Nikons as well are typically, I think it's a 4-5 ratio, so they can get 10 by 8s out of them without losing anything, but once they go to a 3-2, they're losing information. Most cameras these days as well, you can change the ratio of the image before you take the image. Okay, so you can get a 3, 2, a 4, 5, a, a wide angle 16, 9. Sorry, do you mean you change it? In camera. Okay, before you take it after. Before you take it. After you take it, you do it in the software. Okay, so I'm just going to open up an image from my camera card here. Uh, it can be anything. That'll do. One of those. And um, whenever that comes in, so whenever this comes in, it comes in at a certain size. Okay, now if you want to find out the physical size of your image, if you want to find out your physical image size, you go up to your image menu and down to image size, and it tells you the height and the width in pixels and the percentage. If you click on percentage, you can get it in inches or centimeters, whatever you want to work with. Okay, so I'm going to click on centimeters. And okay, well, don't even have to okay that. Now, I don't want you getting bogged down with the fact that this particular image is over a meter and a half by over a meter at 72 pixels per inch. 72 is a web standard. You just have to bear in mind that if I cut that down to a fifth of its size, the 72 will be multiplied by five, taking it up to around 350 pixels per inch. Your 165 or 167 there will become about 32 centimeters, which is over 12 inches. And the other one will be over eight inches. Now you don't have to do the math, you just have to, have to trust in the system. So the other thing I wanna point out to you here is this 43.1M, which is megabytes. As long as we get a crop size and it doesn't exceed 43.1, or the physical size of the image, it means that there's enough quality there for the print that you want to do. Is it, if it is excessively smaller, you've cropped it far too much or you've used the wrong pixels per inch. Okay, so 72 for the web, 300 for print. Okay, so 300 for print is a very, very important number. Okay, so if I go to the crop tool, now I'm assuming you guys don't know anything about Photoshop, so the crop tool on a two column toolbar is the third one down on the left hand side. And whenever I click on that, up here the options bar will change. Okay, so the options bar has changed there. There's nothing in the height, the width, or the resolution. And whenever I go to apply a crop, I can make that crop any size at all. Okay, so that doesn't help us in terms of print sizes. Okay, so I'm just going to cancel that by pressing escape. If, however, I type in the size that I'm looking to print it at, what print size could I be going for, folks? Somebody give me a print size. Okay, 10 by 8 inches, okay. So whenever we're typing it in here to Photoshop, you have to put in IN for inches, otherwise it may revert to whatever the measurement is on the ruler. In this instance, centimeters, okay. So you don't want a 10 centimeter by an 8 centimeter print. It'll be wallet size, it'll be tiny, okay. So make sure you put in inches. And I'm going to put in my 300 and make sure that it's pixels per inch and not pixels per centimeter. Okay? If it's pixels per centimeter, it's going to take forever to print. And your file size shoots way up. Make sure it's pixels per inch. And you can see there that the 10 by 8 does not fit my photo ratio because whenever it came out of my camera, it was a 3 2. So this is where I decide what bit do I want to lose. So I can move this about. And I can go for 
either that bit on the right. Anything that's uh, toned down is the bit that's potentially being cropped off. If I decide that I don't want the landscape orientation, I want my 10 to be a portrait orientation, instead of me typing in 8 inch by 10 inch, I can just hit the little double arrows up here and it switches them around and you can go from landscape to portrait by the click of a button. Okay, and you may decide then that, now bear in mind that we're changing the composition here as well. Something like that, oh, going off print, something like that could be quite cute for asymmetrical. And we're making a photo from within a photo, but it's up to yourselves. The one thing that you don't want to do with any of your crops is do something like that where you're going for such a small amount of the photograph that by the time you stretch that up to your 10 8, if there's any flaws, if it's slightly soft, if it's slightly pixelated, if it's slightly high in ISO, all of those aberrations, I'm going to call them mistakes, okay? All those mistakes are really, really emphasized. So the bigger the print you go for, the more amplified those errors happen to be. So if you are doing a crop, I would never take anything less than half of the image that you're working for. And that's the, the guide or the standard that I work by, okay? So possibly half your photo, but not anything less than half your photo. Now, for me to okay that, I'm just going to hit return to make the confirmation on the computer. And anything that is currently grayed out or dulled down around the outside of the crop selection is cut away. Okay, so now we have a 10 8. If we look down at the bottom left, it says document 20.6M. It's half a 43. That's maybe not necessarily a bad thing, but if it was any less third of the overall file size, rethink your strategy. And then, of course, if you guys are going to save this, you would do file and save as. Why would we not do file and save? It overwrites the original photograph and you lose information. So whenever we do file and save as, typically what I just do, I would give it a wee rename. Okay, so boys of Belfast. And then I would put in the print size as well, 10 by 8. And the reason I put in my 10 by 8 is because whenever I go to actually put these into the print processor, I'm looking for anything that has print sizes beside it so I know what to match up to what print sizes at the kiosk. Once I've got everything done and dusted, I'll come back to that wee bit in a second. Once I've got all my print sizes and all my um, images done into a folder, I would actually take that folder separately on a pen drive so that it's not taking forever to read through all the images that are available. So this thing that's just popped up, because I've done file and save as, this is your JPEG quality options. And you'll see at the minute the quality is sitting at 9, which it deems to be high. If we look over at the side, it's currently 2.4 meg. Now you're going to say, but it's 2.4 meg there, but it's 20.6 meg down on the bottom left. Why is that? The JPEG options dialog box here, this is the size that it's going to be when it's in the folder. So it's like taking a sponge and wringing the sponge out. Okay, so you're taking all the, the data out of the sponge or all the water out of the sponge and you're putting it away. So you're packing it away somewhere. So it's going to be small. And whenever we open it up in the software, it's like adding water to the sponge. It just grows again. Okay, so nine for me, it's not good. Okay. I would make that 9 a 12, and it will go up to something slightly bigger, 7.3. Okay, so it's generally one-third the size in the folder as to when it's opened in Photoshop. You can completely ignore that these days. That was for the old ISDN days on the internet, and it was quality versus speed. We don't have that problem these days with broadband. You can make your images as large as you want to. So I'm just going to click the OK button there. And that's that image saved out as a 10 8 with a different name. So let's just close that down. I'll just quickly run through a different image. Okay, so I will go for this gent here. And I'm going to open that. And the reason why I'm thinking of this one, it has so much potential. First of all, how would you guys improve that image through cropping? What would you remove? Okay, so you think there's far too much sky there, so we could crop that down. So at the minute we have a 10 8, and I could draw that on, and you can see that if I was to move that down, they immediately taken out a lot of the sky, 
improves the composition. If, however, I'm looking for a square print, okay, so if I make that 10 by 10, you'll see that we have much more to work, sorry, much less to work with. So we can't include his hand, and there's still a lot of sky there. Okay, so I'm just going to put that back to, I'll make it an 8 by 6. And it's still 300. And I'm just going to turn that around so that it's portrait orientation. What this allows us to do then is to grab the corner handles and nudge it in, possibly on both sides. And um, what I would suggest there is, see the way at the minute we have a little bullet head or a little arrow? That's for moving your crop around. If you go for the handles, you get a double end arrow, which is for resizing purposes. And if you go to the outside, that little arrow bends rotation. So you can actually rotate your image around. Sorry, this goes black every so often. There's a little bug in the system. So guys, you can rotate that round and you can try and get as much of the guy's face as possible. I'm gonna, again, whenever we hit return here to confirm that, that will be your crop at eight by six at 300. It's now down to a 12 megabyte image. I don't know if you think that that's actually improved the composition or not, as the case may be. Some people are saying yes, some people are saying no. Yeah, there's no context to the image now. So there's not. Uh, before there was a bit of a story. Yeah. And now we've just removed the story. Okay, so if I do Control-Z there, it brings back the whole of the image.